All right, I'm going to work a uh, simple 1D uh, multi-part problem here for you. I've got two cars. One car, uh, the crazy driver car, is following too close to another uh, car. Uh, it's only 6.5 meters in between them. Uh, now, a kid steps out into the road, the problem says, uh, and so the first car then stomps on the brakes to try to avoid hitting the kid, right? And so the first car has a maximum deceleration of 5.8 meters uh, per second squared. Now the crazy driver, the person who's tailgating the purpose, uh, the person who's following pretty close behind, isn't paying attention, uh, that driver then has to hit the brakes also. They, he can decelerate at 6.1 meters per second squared, but that person has a reaction time. They have to see the other car in front hit the brakes, then they have to process it and then move their foot to the brake pedal before the, this crazy driver can start decelerating. Also, that reaction time, pretty fast, 0.39 seconds. Now it says up at the top that both cars start out going 25 meters per second uh, before this occurs. And the question is, will the crazy driver hit the other car? Uh, so we're going to start out just by writing down all the variables that we know. Now notice that I have divided it up into two different cars because there, there are two different things going on and each one of them have their own set of variables. So I'm going to start doing that now. All right, so let's think through the physics of the problem now that I have all, all my variables written down. Just try to describe what's happening here. So my car in front, the, the one in blue here uh, in my picture, and I call it to the right positive and to the left negative. So anything that goes right is going to go positive. So my velocities are positive. Decelerations back to the left, uh, so negative. Uh, this car is just going to decelerate and stop at some point over here. Final velocity of zero. So it's just going to decelerate stop, try to avoid hitting the kid. Now, my crazy driver car, though, uh, in black, and I'm going to use red uh, to, to differentiate between the two, but uh, it's following 6.5 meters behind. So notice I said here my initial position of the first car is 6.5 meters. I'm calling my zero line, if you will, to be uh, x equals zero for all the cars for this entire system to be the front of the crazy person car. So in other words, over here, car one, x not the initial position, they have a 6.5 meter head start, if you will, and that car just gets to decelerate down to a rest, and I'm going to solve for its final position. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the crazy driver. I'm going to find out what its final position is too, but there are two things that occur with our crazy driver. First off, I have a portion of time during the reaction time, which is constant velocity, right? Uh, they're in the process of moving the foot from the gas pedal to the brake pedal, but they're not there yet, so the car continues to coast. We haven't gotten to Newton's first law yet, but we'll get there. An object in motion remains in motion at a constant velocity. Uh, so they continue to go 25 meters per second until they're able to get to the brakes. So they cover some distance, x, right, uh, going at a constant velocity. Then they get to the deceleration point, right, and we're able to slow down. And I'm going to compare what is the final position of the first car to what is the final position at the end of all this, the end of the deceleration period, the final position of the crazy driver. And if the crazy driver's position is at or beyond the position of the first car, I know somewhere in there they collided. Now I could go back and calculate that, but that's not what this problem is asking for. All right, let's go ahead and let's look at car one. I have an initial velocity of 25 meters per second, uh, constant deceleration, negative uh, 5.8 meters per second squared. That negative is very important because we're going back to the left opposite the direction of motion, right? Positive initial velocity going to the right, negative acceleration going back to the left. Uh, the initial position is 6.5. Uh, the final velocity is zero. We're trying to come to a rest. We're not trying to hit the kid. That would be bad. We're not going to do that in our physics problems. Uh, and then we're looking for the final position. So whenever I look at these problems, I pull out my AP packet, uh, and I look for which kinematic equation I want to choose. If you chose the equation we just put in, then you chose correctly here. Uh, remember, this is not constant velocity. Constant velocity has nothing to do with the acceleration pieces. All right, so be very, very careful there. Um, so I've picked out my equation. Now I just need to substitute in all my variables and solve algebraically. All right, so once I substitute in my variables, I manipulate around, I subtracted the 25 squared to the other side. Notice the squares inside the parentheses here to indicate I'm negative. I hit a negative with whatever 
uh, the 25 squared is, right? Um, divide the 2 times negative 5.8 over, add my 6.5. I come out with, using sig figs, 60 meters, uh, which is a reasonable answer for a car moving at 25 meters per second. Now let's solve for how far the crazy driver goes so that I can compare. This is a comparison problem. If I compare uh, against how far the normal driver went, the first driver, then I can see if they got in a wreck or not. Now remember, the crazy driver actually has two parts, though. They have a reaction time. We're traveling at constant velocity, so we've got to use the equation V equals X minus X naught divided by T. That will let me solve for how far X the crazy driver went during the reaction time that then can get substituted into the deceleration problem. All right, as you can see here, uh, just during reaction time, because of how fast they were going, uh, the crazy driver traveled 9.75 meters. Now, you already should be thinking in your head, uh-oh, we have a problem here. That's further than the distance between the cars, meaning that the only hope that the crazy driver has is that the fact that he's going to stomp on the brake pedal and his car has a little bit better deceleration might save him from running into the back of another car, but we'll see. I'm about to take this position here and substitute it in as the initial position in the deceleration problem. Now, word of warning, I have said and I'm going to say again, you do not ever, ever, ever take a constant velocity and substitute into an acceleration. But this is not that case. Reason for that is these are two separate problems, not the same problem. This is a constant velocity problem here during reaction time. And the answer from that constant velocity problem gets used in a completely separate problem, the deceleration piece. Okay, You can't ever use the constant velocity problem inside of an acceleration or a constant velocity equation inside of an acceleration or deceleration problem just to get a velocity that will allow you to substitute in to a kinematic. So the, the reason this is allowed is these are two separate pieces, not one. So I'm taking this position and substituting in to the initial position in the deceleration problem. And you end up using the exact same equation here. Uh, we substitute everything in. Now, I went ahead and worked all the algebra kind of in one big step. You might need to pause the video now and think through what I did to get all the way over here. By the way, it's identical to what happened over here. Same equation, same sort of deal. Um, and I came out with 61 meters with significant figures. So notice the answer is yes, they're going to end up having a wreck in this problem. The lesson that's learned from this is please leave plenty of room. Don't tailgate. Please leave plenty of room between cars because just a very short reaction time, 0.39 seconds, can mean that you don't have a chance at being able to stop in time.